Yo, what's going on guys? Grace here, welcome back to some more Biomutants and today let's take a look at the really awesome weapon unlocks that you can get from each of the six tribes in the game. So each of the tribe will have a specific tribe weapon that's gonna be significantly different than anything else you can find in the game. They will all be of ultimate quality by the way and they all come in with special attack chains and combos that you can pull off and I will also argue are some of the coolest and best weapons, especially in the early stage. So coming right up, right from the very beginning of the game, you are given the option to pick between either the Jagmi tribe or the Myriad tribe. Now in the new game plus, you can immediately go ahead and pick between any of the six tribes in the game, but honestly, this is not going to matter too much in the long run because eventually you're going to get in contact with them anyway, and you will either conquer them or ally yourself with them, a case in which you will get these weapons anyway. But in terms of usefulness, probably the best that you will still use in the end game is going to be the Jagmi tribe staff simply because it comes with extra utility. So yes, this can be used as a regular weapon, it has its own chain of attacks that I might argue is also one of the longest in the game. Um, you also get access to a tsunami thrust by the way if you get that upgrade, so you can press double square followed by a triangle and kinda impale a target and then smash it into the ground for extra stun lock. But most important, you come with that extra utility over there on top which is is, well, this helicopter mode that you can use your Jagmi staff on. So just jump into the air once and then press and hold your melee button and your character is going to spin that Jagmi staff two times and it is going to gain more height and a little bit more distance. This is an amazing way to traverse the terrain, to maybe even like jump over a ledge or over a river and whatnot and it still helps me over in the end game. You can further combine this with the helicopter backpack that I covered in yesterday's video and if you follow up with the Jagmi staff after you've used the helicopter you're going to gain a ton of height as you can see right here so overall really amazing one that you should get right from the very start the second one that you can also get is the Myriad Boomerang and just like the name implies this is going to be a ranged weapon but it also has some melee combos so if you use it as a regular ranged weapon you can throw it at the enemy and it will come back to your character it's pretty spammy so you can use it to deal some pretty high damage with it but obviously some of the guns will definitely outperform it but its biggest advantage comes from its double jump attack which kind of acts as a knockback and it's one of the earliest knockbacks that you get access to in Biomutant. So you have to unlock this ability into your Wang Fu ability section but you can then spam it against pretty much any smaller sized enemy to knock them back. Um, everything else about it is pretty mediocre so I would probably not use it outside of that knockback and maybe to do a bunch of other setups but it also comes with a dodge into melee attack and then followed with another RT case in which you're going to do this. I'm um, kind of like a gap closing jump onto the target and you will then again knock them back onto the ground. Coming up to number 3 we have a very unique ranged weapon, actually the only one of its type in the game which is the Ankari bow that you can get from the tribe with the same name. Now the reason why this is so unique is because it's the only bow gun that you can actually find in the game, you can find something similar to it but not like really full on bows. And yes you will shoot arrows with it, its advantage is the fact that it's very fast, very spammy and easy to reload, it takes only a split second for a full reload, but most important it comes with some of the best combos in the game. You will obviously have to invest some perk points to unlock these, but one of the first is the panicked goal, which is the dodge melee followed by a weapon shoot, which is going to make you kind of like do this uh, double spin followed by a really nice kind of like shotgun effect that you will do with this bow, which means you're going to shoot a ton of arrows into the enemy's body and deal a lot more damage. The second one is also a shotgun type of attack that this time around you're going to do from the air, so it's called the Raven's Flame and this is essentially your double jump attack. So double jump, shoot with it and you're going to do another spin and you're going to like again do an even higher damage with this because you're shooting even more arrows into the body of the target. So I really like this one but outside of these two combos it's pretty 
pretty mediocre and you're probably gonna want to use something else, especially if you're playing with a dead eye and whatnot. Moving on to number 4, if you ever wanted to feel like Bruce Lee but in Biomutant, then look no further than the Pichu Tribe Nunchucks. And yes, these are a full pair of nunchucks that you can get for your character. Now, there are two amazing combos right here that are so good that they are basically the best and the most reliable when it comes to pushing enemies up into the air so that we can pull off the air combo and fully disable them for the entire duration. So the first one is called the Palace Twist. Again, you need to unlock these with the perk points, but this is essentially your double square followed by the triangle, which is going to stun those enemies if you pull it off, which means you can continue with the L1 bun, throw them up into the air, and then continue that melee chain in the air and deal even more damage. This is, by the way, way more reliable than your block stagger attack that I talked about in the tips and tricks guide I did, because you can pull it off way more often and you don't have to wait for incoming attacks. The next one is going to be the one that you follow after shooting your weapon two times. So this is called the seven sin snap where your character is going to do this really crazy spin forward that will again even more reliably stun those targets so you can even more easily throw them up into the air. So all around one of my favorite weapons in the game even though it's regular combo with the square attack might not be the best. Now onto the fifth spot we have the Metra Tribe Grappler which just like how the name implies is pretty much a grappling hook and you use this in a couple of ways. Against smaller targets you can use this to bring them to you and disengage them from their parties so that you can take these targets one at a time. So that can be very useful. Against the bigger brutes it acts as a gap closing ability so it can be useful if you want to interrupt them or take them down a little bit faster but you will also be in their harm's way. Now two of the special abilities and combos that you can pull off with this one. One of them is the Savage Stork, which is essentially your double jump followed by RT. So this is going to grab an enemy below you and then you're going to do an overhead smash into the ground, which can, yeah, stun them momentarily as well as any target that might be on the landing surface. But that has to be pretty close to the original one. It can be useful, but many times I found this to miss since you are not always going to be in the perfect range from the the nearby targets so you pretty much have to have almost perfect positioning for this to fully work. The other one is the dreaded sheep which is essentially your melee dodge into shoot which is going to do this cross slash with it that is actually good at stunning targets even bigger ones but only momentarily and it's more like a stagger rather than a stun. Overall I would say that this isn't like the best weapon in the game and the one that I use the least because I just find it confusing and not really that fun. Fun. But there is one that is extremely fun and also the last one on the list which is the Lotus Shuriken from the Lotus Tribe. So this is another ranged weapon that uses its Shuriken weapon and just like in the case of the bow it comes with the advantage that it's extremely spammy. You will shoot a ton of these into the targets and you can also reload them very very fast. But two of the combos that I really enjoyed are the Rat's Hand which is the double jump followed by the RT. You jump twice into the air and your character is going to do these spins and even as it lands it's going to do what I call a shuriken shotgun again because you throw a ton of these into a general cone direction in front of you so it can absolutely knock down smaller enemies and deal damage, high damage towards the smaller ones. The other one is the goopy thunder which is again the dodge melee and shoot sequence which is going to make your character throw multiple of these stars again the enemy and then do a final spin that also kind of acts as a knockback so between these two these provide some really nice knockbacks but what's most important is that this weapon is amazing against the bigger targets and brutes the biggest reason is because this weapon has a lot of armor peers so against any target with armor on them this will behave amazingly well like even if you are not invested into range damage against some of these brutes you can deal a ton of that and take them down really easily fairly early on in the game assuming that you will be able to get these. But this is it with all of the weapons, the tribe specific weapons in the game. Let me know which one you use the most and I will see you guys in the next one.